the one year anniversary of Donald Trump's election as president of the United States and the left decided to be uh, triggered all over again. There was the beginning of the refuse uh, fascism uh, movement, which was basically the same sort of you know, leftist uh, anti for Black Lives Matter protests we've come to expect complaining about, you know, uh, racism and how we need to embrace intersectionality. And then there was, I initially thought it was a joke, but the scream helplessly at the, <laughs> the sky, which uh, uh, this woman uh, did famously on Inauguration Day. Apparently that was uh, a legitimate thing. <laughs> Which, like, don't they understand that that just makes you look uh, ridiculous? So it's clear one year on that the left has learnt nothing and are still continuing on with their you know, uh, immature behaviour. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the funniest things I've seen. But, like, when I watched it also, like, I thought they had kind of compiled different people yelling at the staff for different reasons. When I figured out that it was an organized movement, not only that, but they, they were basing it on one of the most cartoonish uh, <laughs> depictions of, you know, this, this woman or this guy, I don't, I don't really know who it was, that yelled when, he, when, when Trump became president, which is basically kind of like the, the icon of the triggered leftist who just could not deal with the fact that Donald Trump was president. I just could not believe that they were taking that symbol on and kind of using it to represent themselves. And this is supposed to show why they're not winning elections anymore. They're just not winning elections anymore because they think everything that everyone hates about them, they're grabbing, they're holding onto it, and they're, they're kind of squeezing it to their chest. And anything that people do like about the left and anything that has to do politically with the left that people would like, they're ignoring. It's all about, you know, being tr triggered and hashtags and, you know, I, I always say it's just, it's just kind of one of those ridiculous things. That's why they're, um, they're just so inefficient uh, in, in kind of recruitment so far. Well, there were um, a few elections because uh, the first uh, Tuesday of November in the United States is uh, Election Day, and the governorships of New Jersey and Virginia went dem Democratic, which the uh, media claimed was uh, because the anti-Trump movement uh, was energised and they went out and campaigned for these uh, you know, uh, Democratic uh, nominees. Uh, but it should be noted that both of these states are traditionally blue states. I mean, they both uh, voted for, for Hillary Clinton in, in last year's election. I mean, you really can't uh, see too much in, in, into these results. But of course, you know, the media, they love uh, any opportunity to uh, take a, a, whack at, a whack at Trump. But, you know, we won't see, you know, what, how, what the real yep. state of uh, Trump's popularity is until uh, the midterms next year when most governorships are up for election. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the things I just thought was so ridiculous. People were just like so excited because, you know, we took back these two governorships, which, you know, from states that are really blue and that, you know, voted mostly for uh, what's called mo most uh, localities voted overwhelmingly for Hillary Clinton. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't think that this is vindication for for um, for Democrats or for the Democratic Party. Um, and I don't think, you know, one of the things that, that Trump might have contributed to is that the Democratic Party needed to step up its game and realize that, you know, just the fact of being Democrats or just the fact of not being Trump is not a threat anymore, which is kind of like what they ran on in 2016, which was such a catastrophic disaster. They kind of realized that, you know, they're, they're, that we kind of have to step up our game. So that might have contributed in some way, shape or form. Uh, but what we do know about about uh, Trump's, uh, Trump's popularity is at least what polling, scientific polling tells, is that it's extremely low. So um, I think that, that that even though these two elections don't tell us it, or weren't just necessarily a uh, backlash against Trump, that Trump is completely in the clear right now is um, is absolutely not true. I mean, if you see uh, his polling numbers right now are the lowest in seven decades of polling uh, for a president uh, ten months in. So uh, not that not that the, the elections were um, a referendum on Trump, but to say Trump's in the clear, I wouldn't go that far. Well, the Democratic Party itself, I mean, its approval ratings are still not very high. I mean, uh, po politicians, you know, Washington is not popular with the voters, period. I mean, Congress has an incredibly low uh, approval rating. So uh, I've, I, I don't think that the Democrats can claim they're, you know, riding high. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. Right now, I mean, it's, it's kind of a strange situation where um, both sides of the aisle are completely unpo unpopular. And, you know, there's 
fighting with each other to see who can become less unpopular. And um, I mean, that, that's a, what, what, what a situation we're in right now, right? The most powerful country in the world, basically just playing kind of a pissing contest to see who can be less hated than the other guy. It's a, it's a shame. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, relevant to the election, and uh, you know, relevant to wanting to end a town for any certain it's just, get, it's just getting completely out of hand. I mean, the, the, a reputable news source like CNN, MSNBC, uh, or um, NPR, all these, all these institutions that were so important to, uh, to the American uh, identity uh, for so many years would kind of take on these uh, wild interpretations is just absurd. And uh, as the uh, one-year anniversary passes by, Donald Trump wasn't actually in the United States. He was on a uh, tour of Asia, where uh, I, I thought he was, you know, being quite, you know, diplomatic with the uh, Prime Minister of Japan. He made a good speech to the South Korean Parliament. But of course, and th and this is why, you know, the mainstream media is, you know. Uh, uh, trust in it is being constantly eroded because they're still picking at things that he did. Like, for example, they accused him of uh, killing fish in Japan when he was feeding the fish uh, in a pond with the Japanese prime minister and said that, oh, he dumped his, uh, all, 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 the, all the fish food into, into the, uh, the, the pond, which was not actually correct. It was just the, the camera angle that made it appear like that. Yeah. That was one of the. That was among one of the shadier things that I've seen from CNN so far. Because I've always said that I'm very skeptical to call CNN fake news because you can't just call anything you don't like fake news. You know, it's it's sometimes the reporting is correct, and biased. But if you see what CNN did was basically zoom in to Trump, right when Shinzo Abe throws his whole whole dude in, front. and then kind of Trump, you know, looks to the guy, you know, who's who knows how to do this. Thing and then pours it in. The headline reads, Trump gets impatient and throws fish out, or whatever. That's fake news. I mean, that's one of the things, like, you know, you can be misleading, you can be biased, but when you're flat out lying, that is, that's fake news. And that's, and I just thought it was so, and it's such a cheap shot. I mean, if you're actually going to lie to millions of people with such an easily, verifi easily verifiable um, occurrence, at least make it good. I mean, at least make it something that's gonna that's gonna you know get people upset. I mean, the fact that Trump threw fish food into the food. I mean, did we hear him say that he grabbed a pussy uh, some months ago? Like, this is not a big deal. So yeah, I thought that I thought that was just um, that was just ridiculous. And, yeah, and even some other mainstream media outlets, like they, they had to you know report. Look, you know this is not true. Like he he didn't you know dump uh, dump the fish. Uh, food in the in the lake, and so they, you know, at, le at least they had some uh, integrity to, you know, correct what, what was clearly a misleading story. Absolutely, absolutely, and if you see what Trump has been doing in um, in Asia, I mean, if it, it kind of plays very well to what the what the left would want of him, you know, he he went, he was extremely diplomatic in um, in Japan, he was extremely diplomatic in Korea. And uh, I think that if anyone should be upset, it should be his base, you know? You know, I remember in 2016 when Trump said that China was raping our country, <laughs> and then, you know, right now he's like, oh, we're best friends, you know, we need to be even closer, and, you know, we love China. So, I, I, again, it's it's just such, such a um, predisposition to hate Trump for being Trump, and he can never do anything. I mean, he could decide to become a Democrat and become pro-choice and, you know, do everything that the Democrats want, and they would just still completely... Um, bash him for anything and it just just shows such a lack of objectivity uh in the mainstream media world uh it, both i mean even, even fox news which is it's sort of mainstream it's just you know they, they they will basically praise anything trump does even if it's bad and it's just so worrisome well let's have a look at uh, trump one year on i mean contrary to the hysteria america has not fallen apart in fact the economy is uh, improved, you know, jobs are being created. However, Trump, he does still need to fulfill key election promises. Uh, the Obamacare repeal, uh, of, you know, let's be honest about that, that's been a disaster. Um, the wall is, uh, building hasn't commenced on it. So he's still got uh, a lot of work to do. Absolutely. I mean, if you see if you see Trump, um, I mean, and one of the, one of his biggest issues is his tweeting and his uh, his just uh, lack of ability to stay on message. That just leads lawmakers and le you know it kind of shifts public opinion. So it does not allow people in Congress to kind of vote in his favor. First of all, when it comes to the wall, apparently they're going to start building it. They already have some prototypes going up, but it's not going to be paid by Mexico. That that's one of the things that just like completely. Um, 
completely off the table. And if you actually see, I don't know if you if you read the transcript the transcripts between Trump and uh, Peña Nieto, the the president of Mexico, that he was on the phone. He's like, oh, listen, what? Whatever, you just be saying that anywhere. Really, I don't care about it, but politically, it's very important. Clearly, the people that are going to pay for the wall are are the American taxpayers. So, uh, you know, that's even if it gets built, I think it's it's a pretty 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 big um, flop either way. Uh, the repeal of Obamacare has been absolutely disastrous, and uh, I think one of the reasons is is it, uh, Republicans were just basically, you know, running on this for years and years and years and saying it was such a disaster and we need to get rid of it the first day that it comes in. And then they win. I think they didn't expect to, to win. They're like, holy shit, I mean, what are we going to do? We need to <laughs> work really fast. They didn't really put together a very well thought out plan uh, either of the three times, and it has just been a... Um, an absolute disaster, and you know Trump has really done very little. And even the tra- the travel ban, I mean, he he did his best. And you know, even on a third attempt, some other uh, judge, I think this time it was in Hawaii, blocked it once again. So Trump is not is not doing well politically. I mean, he really needs that legislative win. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.